there's a book that every network engineer should read. That's all right. What's good, YouTube? If you're watching this video, you successfully made it to layer seven of that OSI model where we give you nothing but that application you can apply directly to your life. I'm your host, Dewan. Now, there's a book that every network engineer should read. If you have not read this book, I'm going to break down in full detail why you, as an aspiring network engineer, as a current network engineer, or as someone that just got their CCNA certification, this book is a must read. If you don't know what a network engineer is, I talk about it in full detail in this video here. Like I mentioned, my name is Dewan Lightfoot and I'm a network engineer and I love what I do. So, what book am I talking about? This book is titled Network Warrior by Gary Donahue. It's the second edition. You can find a link to this book in the description of this video. Use the link. It's an affiliate link and it helps my channel. Anyway. Network Warrior, let's talk about it. Before we really dive into the book, let me tell you a story. I've been in IT for many years. I've done several jobs, but it took me until the year 2018 to actually land my first network engineer title role. And the environment that I went into was a huge organization. They had over 3,000 sites, and I had no idea what I was getting into but I was up for the challenge. When I'm walking into a situation like that, although I was up for the challenge, I like to be prepared. So I did a lot of Googling, a lot of research, and I came across this Network Warrior book. And let me tell you, this book opened up my eyes and really prepared me for the real world. Because I've been a system administrator, I've been a network technician, and I've done many things in IT, but being a network engineer, being responsible for WAN connectivity was something I had never done. So in this situation, Network Warrior really opened my eyes to understanding the why of network engineering on an enterprise level. So let's break down the book. Chapter one explains what is a network as you should start there. That's the foundation. Chapters two through eight breaks down everything you need to know about layer two. It covers VLANs, trunking, VTP, link aggregation, and then it goes on to explain your switch installation and designing your network to prevent layer two spanning tree issues. That right there was a big one for me. So to just start from chapters one through eight, is giving you that foundation on what a network is as well as breaking down layer two. So we're kind of going up the OSI model from the physical layer all the way up to that data link layer. Now chapter nine through 15 goes on to break down routing and those routing protocols. So your RIP, your EIGRP, your OSPF and your BGP. It also goes on to explain your first hot redundancy protocols, route maps and Ceph. So we're really getting into those meat and potatoes of your layer three, that network layer of your OSI model. Now, before the book really gets deep into the weeds, chapters 16 through 19 covers your data center and your enterprise switch platforms, like your 4,500, your 6,500, your Nexus, and your 3,750s. Now, granted, some of these technologies are in the life. This book was written in 2011, but the thing about this book, it gives you the why. As a new CCNA professional that's never been a network engineer, having that why for many of the technologies that I'm covering, many of the topics that I'm covering, doesn't always come clear right away. This book will definitely give you the insides and out. And as I keep going through these chapters, you'll really get a full understanding of why you should read this book. Chapters 20 through 24, covers your WAN connectivity. Yes, your T1s, your DS3s, your frame relay, your MPLS. You laugh at the fact that I mentioned T1s and DS3, 
but TDM to Ethernet deployments are still ongoing in many companies right now as we speak. One thing I want to mention is that it's always best to ask about the type of WAN connections in an interview to understand the type of networks and the scope that you'll be supporting. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, that's why you should read this book. When I talk about WAN connectivity, this is how your enterprise environments are connecting to the internet. This is how your enterprise environments are connecting between data centers. This is how your enterprise environments are connecting between offices. Now, sometimes it may be layer two, an extended layer two, but oftentimes it's some type of WAN connection in between these sites. Chapters 25 through 28 covers security. This is your triple A authentication, your ASA firewalls, configuration and troubleshooting, your access list. One of the key jewels that I took away from this book was how it broke down firewall theory and then configuring and troubleshooting in ASA. Because at that time, when I read this book, there wasn't too much training on ASA configurations. They would show you how to configure an access list, show you how to configure everything in ASDM, and show you how to configure that device, but not too much a why or how to design this deployment. This book breaks all that down. Chapter 29 covers wireless. The technologies that it covers are insecure right now, but again, this is all about theory. This is all about the why. The book isn't about giving you the latest and greatest information. It's about the why. And that's the most important thing of a network engineer because technology is always changing. It's always evolving. You can learn something today and tomorrow your organization is rolling out something brand new. And if you don't have that why, that true foundation, you're going to struggle. Trust me, this book will help you avoid many of the pitfalls that I faced in my career. Chapter 30 goes on to talk about VoIP. For those of you that are interested in collaboration, this breaks down voice over IP. And if we're talking about VoIP, you have to mention QoS. Chapters 31 through 34 breaks down QoS. We talked about VoIP. Now we need to make sure that we're managing our enterprise environments so we don't have any jitters, so that we don't have any issues with our VoIP configuration. So configuring QoS, explaining QoS the design, and then it shows you how to determine if your network is congested. And lastly, it walks you through troubleshooting a converged network. Chapter 35 helped me tremendously. It gave me that knowledge that I was kind of missing on how to design my network. At the CCNA level, you get a lot of configuration, you get a lot of troubleshooting, but the actual designing of networks, I kind of missed it. This book really gives you that why on design from documentation of your actual logical and physical network to documenting your IP addresses and VLANs and spreadsheets. Now, there are things that like IPAM that you'll learn about as well, but for many organizations, a spreadsheet is still in use. Moving on to chapters 36 through 37. One of the things that many of us struggle with was IP addressing. This book breaks it down very simple when it comes to understanding IPv4 and IPv6, not just the subnetting portion, but the design and addressing portion. For those of you that wanna know how to really assign addresses throughout your network, this book is a must. Okay, 38 breaks down NTP, network time protocol, breaks that down, gives you an understanding of that. And lastly, chapters 39 through 41. In my opinion, these are the most important chapters in the book because Gary provided real world situations, how to handle those situations, what to expect, why organizations make the decisions that they make. There was just so much knowledge and information that I gained from those three chapters, it made this book like a gold mine in my situation. So for those of you that have never been a network engineer, are looking to become network engineers, are newly certified, are network technicians, looking to grow your skills, looking to expand your knowledge, looking for that right opportunity, this book will give you that why 
on being a network engineer. Let me know if you read this book. I would love to hear your comments in the section below. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I thank you all for viewing, and I will catch you on the next one.